case, you know, he asked the question in the article, what else is going on behind the scenes? Well, we've reported before on the show how they have all these, uh, FEMA bought all these coffins, these plastic coffins, and they're all around the country, and how they pulled cemeteries to get ready for mass graves to see where they can build mass graves and stuff. A uh, famous document that is posted in the document section at info is uh, for out of New York State, a survey to see about mass graves in New York. And LewRockwell.com, Bill Sardi wrote, Tuesday, October 27, 2009, what's behind the false flag flu emergency? To my surprise, on the afternoon of the following day, the President of the United States has indeed declared a national emergency due to a thousand reported flu deaths, a hundred of them among children. These deaths have occurred over the past eight months. But a thousand accumulated deaths would be far fewer than the mortality figures that the Centers for Disease Control put out. And they estimate 36,000 annual flu deaths. So we're about 35,000 less than what the seasonal flu does. You know, and this, this year's flu outbreak appears even weaker than that. Now, the San Francisco Chronicle described it. Art Reingold, head of epidemiology at UC Berkeley, said the declaration doesn't mean that the national outbreak is any worse than it was yesterday or the day before or last week or last month. Obama's just setting up powers, okay, to override the Bill of Rights and the Constitution. It's a dictatorship. Civil liberties are threatened here. When the president formally declares a national emergency, he may seize property and control the means of production, seize commodities, assign military forces abroad without congressional approval of all this, okay? Another government emergency. National emergencies are always good for bypassing rules and making things up on the fly. You know, never let a good crisis go to waste. That's the, the uh, New World Order's model, these globalist model. Oh, it's just incredible, you know? The fact is, Sabella says that children are the most susceptible to the H1N1 flu and should be vaccinated against it. And October 8th, it was announced that President Obama's school-aged children have not been vaccinated against it. And we're going to get into that in a minute, but the reason why people don't want to get it is there's all kinds of side effects. It's been proven. You know, this has got squalene in it, thermosol, uh, which is a preservative that has mercury and it affects your brain it, it, it produces neurological disorders check out what happened to um, a woman that did take the shot well now this is a story of an amazingly beautiful young woman she was training to be a pro football cheerleader and she got a flu shot. She says that shot has destroyed her chances of happiness. We told you about her story last time. Now Les Trent is with this woman for a first-hand look at what her life has become. She's the beautiful cheerleader whose heartbreaking story is shocking the nation. 25-year-old <laughs> Desiree Jennings showed me how she can't walk without twisting, jerky movements. But she walks backwards normally. Doctors say she has a rare one-in-a-million neurological disorder that was triggered 10 days after she got a seasonal flu shot. Started with me not being able to eat without passing out. You couldn't eat without passing out? I visited Desiree and her husband Brendan at their home in Ashburn, Virginia to see what their daily life is like. She has to go up and down stairs backwards because something as simple as walking forward can be dangerous. And here's the unusual part about the disorder. Take a look at this. Desiree can run just fine. It's only when she stops. You see, that's where the, that's where the spasms start. Now, you can walk backwards, though, and, and, and it'll make it better, right? Yeah. She runs with a normal stride. And as I ran with her, she even spoke normally. And now you can talk. Yeah, it's weird. It's fixes as soon as I start running. I mean, you sound... You sound I know, it's great. It's great. <laughs> you sound amazing. <laughs> and then you stop, and that's what happens. Desiree got a flu shot on August 23rd. Ten days later, she came down with what doctors have diagnosed as dystonia, a rare neurological disorder. 
Her jerking and twisting are the result of uncontrollable muscle contractions. There is no known cure. Are you all ready? Yes. This is home video of Desiree as a beautiful bride when she married Brendan two years ago. And this is a photo when she was training to be a cheerleader for the Washington Redskins. Doctors say what happened to Desiree should discourage people from getting flu shots. But here's what the woman who's on the wrong side of being one in a million says. Running has to be a, a relief. The only thing you have left. The fact of the matter is that in uh, the 70s, when they had the first so-called swine flu outbreak there, more people died from the vaccine than, than the actual virus itself, the actual flu virus itself. Now, I, I mentioned that in Albany, there was big protests from health workers that did not want to take this uh, shot. Well, now the New York governor declares emergency in response to mass rejection of the swine flu hysteria. You know, and this is how they get away with this. Now, the New York governor has declared a state emergency. Oh, my God. Now he can override that uh, mandatory and make people take it again, even though they protested. Believe me, the establishment and the elite globalists, they have always find ways around this stuff. And this is because the New York Times reported Thursday, October 29, 2009, city parents opting out of swine flu vaccine. Governor declares H1N1 to be a state disaster emergency. The Times Union reported this. In response to requests for assistance from local governments across New York State, Governor David Patterson today issued Executive Order 29 declaring a state disaster emergency which will provide additional personnel and flexibility to local governments as they work to implement a statewide vaccination campaign to protect New Yorkers from H1N1 influenza. Now, here, here it is. Overriding our state constitution. This is a violation of our civil rights. Obama administration launches, launches deceptive swine flu propaganda campaign. And, and this is a huge thing. Increasing numbers of scientists and doctors are issuing harsh criticisms of the government's plan to vaccinate forcibly if necessary virtually the entire U.S. population. And they claim it's a poorly tested vaccine and not only ineffective against swine flu, but it could cripple and even kill many more people than it helps. And you've seen what happened to the cheerleader. You know, this is serious stuff. For example, Dr. Anthony Morris, a distinguished biologist and former chief vaccine office at the U.S. Federal Drug Administration states, there is no evidence that any influenza vaccine thus far developed is effective in preventing or migrating any attack of influenza, and that the producers of these vaccines know they are worthless, but they go on selling them anyway. Well, yeah, because you have ma uh, makers like Baxter and all, they don't even care if HIV and stuff is put out in these vaccines. You understand what I'm saying? I, and this was actually... Uh, Medication for uh, hemophiliacs is what they put it, the HIV in. But they put out live avian bird flu in their vaccines, sent it out to 18 countries. Czechoslovakians tested it on a ferret. The ferret died. That's how they found out. I mean, this is incredible. A recent uh, CBS investigative report says that they refused to honor a freedom of information request to receive flu infection data for each individual state. The CDC, and this is a huge article, I implore you to go over to hearingthomas.info under the weekly news section and read it. The CDC constantly is fudging the numbers, uh, they're very inconsistent with the data, and they're covering it up by not allowing people to take a look at it, even through a Freedom of Information Act request. Elsewhere in the world, particularly in Europe, civilians are increasingly rejecting the H1N1 vaccine. Recent polls in Germany and Austria show only 13 and 18 percent respectively willing to take the shot. In Sweden, four vaccine-related deaths have been announced, and almost 200 healthcare workers have reported becoming more seriously ill from the vaccination as they would have been from the flu infection itself. In the U.S., anywhere from 90 to 99 percent of adverse events 
go unreported. Yeah, the media is covering this up. They don't talk about Gillian Barr syndrome and all this other stuff. You know what I'm saying? They don't talk about it at all. 